Hey coders, welcome to the video talking about the React Native CLI. It is the other side of Expo, where Expo spools up a quick little app you can typically demo in a simulator if you want, or quickly get on your physical device. If you wanted to write more complex React, or rather native code on a mobile device, or if you wanted to even deploy your Expo code to one of the stores, you would first have to run an eject out of it, at which point you would have to follow a lot of the very same instructions here to get your newly ejected native project up and running. What React Native CLI does instead is it makes this a bare bones native project for you. So you can code in React Native and it will actually build an Xcode project and an Android Studio project that you can use. Just like the beginning of the last video, I will mention that the getting started section in the React Native documentation is going to be your best friend. Believe me. Um, well, especially when it comes to targeting Windows and Android, there is a lot you have to do. Uh, I will preface this video by saying that you, I suggest before you continue on from this point, you make sure that you run down these installing dependencies. I did a fresh and clean install on my Windows machine not but two days ago following the exact directions in the Windows and Android under the Building Projects with Native Code tab. Here it tells you the exact dependencies you're going to have to download, how to get them safely, how to install everything you need, how to get your Android virtual device up and running quickly and easily out of the box. Now, if you want to develop on iOS for Windows, like I mentioned before, you are out of luck. However, the Mac, uh, the people running Mac OS in this curriculum here will be able to run iOS and Android very easily. I have not personally tried to install Android Studio on my Mac OS device, but it looks like it follows a lot of the same or if not similar steps. However, for you Mac OS and iOS developers, you have it extremely easy. You will need to install Node, which you surely have by this point in the curriculum. You'll also have to install Watchman by using something called Brew, and you can find the link to Homebrew here, like I had mentioned before in the previous video, where you can run this command right here in your terminal, probably ask you for an administrating password, and then you should be good to go. After that, all you need to do is literally download uh, Xcode and make sure your command line tools are also installed and then that's it. Your emulator will automatically spin up for you upon using the command to run your native project. For Windows and Android users, the minimum requirement is after installing Android Studio, setting up your virtual device, you have to have it running in the background of your computer before you can move forward. With that little preamble out of the way, let's talk about the basics. We're going to learn it, know it, live it. So on installation for the React Native CLI, uh, it's very easy. All you have to do is run npm install dash g React Native CLI and boom, you got it. That's really simple. There's really not a whole lot to be messing with right there. Um, after you have your CLI tools installed, you can literally just run react dash native init and whatever your app name is. I believe the same rules applied from the expo videos where you can't use hyphens, you have to have no spaces and typically people use capital uh, letters for each word in the name of their app or directory. You CD into it and then you can just run react-native, run-android or run-ios depending on what sim you want to get up and running. And that's it. It should take the time to build all that basic native code. Again, it'll actually build it into two directories you probably wouldn't see in your iOS and or you rather your Expo project. There's an iOS directory that builds an actual Xcode project, an Android directory that builds an actual Android pro like Android Studio project. You can open these either of these projects in those same environments and be able to write like legit native code for the device you're trying to work with. Um, after the build process is done, it actually uses the same Metro bundler that we saw with Expo. It's a bundling tool that takes your JavaScript, bundles it up, and sends it off to your simulator. Um, a couple notes before we begin diving in, and we're also going to be discussing adding TypeScript early on before we end up testing this code together in this video, which you'll see why in just a moment. Um, if you some notes to take to take some things to take note of, if I can learn to talk, uh, you if you have Yarn already installed, it is a competing package manager to npm. This came out at the time around um, the npm three to five version range. I can't quite remember anymore since NPM at that time had a couple issues and Yarn was developed to fix those issues. These days they're much more in line and pretty much achieve the same thing. I don't know if one's better than the other at the moment at the, well, at the time of recording this video. So if you have Yarn, React Native CLI will automatically use Yarn to um, install and link all your dependencies. 
Now, moving forward, if you choose this path, I would recommend highly to stick to one or the other, but not interchange as it might cause issues. So if you installed using Yarn and you want to continue using Yarn, go ahead and do all your Yarn commands with Yarn add and things like that. However, if you want to switch to NPM and use NPM to install all your packages afterwards, after your project is done being built the first time, you're going to want to just CD into the directory, or rather initialize the first time. So before this process, you're, when you just do your React Native init, you're going to want to CD into the directory, delete the node modules folder, the yarn.lock, and then run an npm install. It should install your node modules folder based off of package.json and produce a package lock JSON. Um, and another caveat about React Native projects is that some anything that's built off of native code or utilizes native code, you'll have to link it to your projects, meaning your Android directory and your iOS directory must be referencing those projects. They must be referencing those UI kits, for example. Those are big ones that you're going to be have to running links on. There's some more documentation on within this linking thing, which you can also find in the React Native docs, or actually link to, pun intended with the link here. Um, and typically all you have to do is once you run your NPM install like native base, if we chose to do native bases UI kit, after that's done installing, we run the command react native link before we try to spool up our, simula our, our simulator, otherwise it won't work. It will give you a big fat red error directly upon trying to load it. More than likely you've installed a dependency and forgot to run a react native link. And I figured this out as of tonight, actually. There's an act there is this instant little uh, command, nice little command here we can do inline to install the library with the native dependencies, right? Um, and so moving on down to the bottom part before we start demoing anything here, talking about adding TypeScript. Now, it can be manually done, which I actually did right before recording this video to make sure that instructions were up to date. It's a blog post from the middle of last year talking about the new features that this offers. Now, while I'm going to be talking about this little command you're probably wondering about right there, saying, you know, we can just run a template with TypeScript, which we'll be talking about in just a second. There is a repo from um, Microsoft that talks about how to build a TypeScript React Native project using the React Native init CLI. So once we initialize your project, you'll have to go add your TypeScript compiler, a couple other things, and you're going to have to edit your um, TS config and all that kind of fun stuff. Now, I follow this, um, this GitHub repository right here to a T, and it worked totally fine. Then I discovered this convenient little command that that blog post was showing. We can literally just initialize a new React Native project by adding a dash dash template flag and the TypeScript um, library right there. That way it initializes a new native project with TypeScript already included, making it very easy for us to get up and running with almost no effort whatsoever. So let's see, there's awesome project from the Expo CLI videos. We're going to go ahead and paste that command. That's what's there, right? And we'll call it, and we'll just leave it on my app for now. We'll let it run. And see my, uh, since I have Yarn installed from tooling around in previous versions, uh, I'm actually going to take the exact same steps I mentioned by deleting the yarn lock node modules and using npm install to reinstall everything. Um, and your first time spooling everything up might take a while. Um, while this is actually running, I'm going to go ahead and begin to open up my Android Studio. Again, you should have it hopefully done by this point in the process. Lots of stuff going on. You can see it linking things in the background if you read what it's doing by linking dependencies, right? Uh, so yeah, in my Android Studio, there's something called AVD Manager, which stands for Android Virtual Device, which you'll be setting up following that documentation. I have a Pixel 2 set up with the Android 9.0 SDK, which is stand, which is the Pi, Oreo. I can't remember which one it is these days. No, Oreo's old. I think it's Pi. Cool. So you'll notice here that my little simulator is up and running. We're good to go. So I can close out the Device Manager and my Studio Entry Point. I'm going to go back to my terminal, CD into my app. I'm going to, like I mentioned, delete my node modules and my yarn lock. That shouldn't take but a minute here, hopefully, unless that node modules directory is massive. Sweet. And I'm going to go ahead and run my npm install. This video will be a little bit on the lengthier side, and it's just to get yourself up and running a bare bones native TypeScript project in the simulator of your choice. Uh, in the next series of videos, we're going to be talking about actually building an app from the ground up, how to build like a full stack app almost.
This could take a minute, and once again, once I run that command to begin my simulator, which was react-native run-android in my case, the first build process sometimes can take a little while, but hopefully my computer's running at top-notch performance tonight, which we'll see. Yeah. Mm, there are some caveats. I should probably actually mention that while it's installing in the background. Um, the caveats is that we're not actually using TypeScript module itself. We are actually using a new version of Babel 7 that has integrated TypeScript support, which does have a couple things it can't do. Uh, if you're more curious on that information, for those of you that have been coding in TypeScript for a while and you're curious, you can probably look it up yourself. Or we can scroll down here to the caveat section. Let me zoom in a bit so some people can actually read this. Um, as of right now, it cannot understand namespaces or bracket style type assertion, meaning like bracket foo x to type something in a TS file. It works totally fine in TSX files though. Um, and enums that span multiple declarations and it doesn't support legacy style import export syntax. Um, but other than that, like their intention is to make sure that these caveats don't grow any larger and hopefully after this video, maybe even the day after, maybe in a week after, hopefully soon though, uh, these issues will be no longer a problem even in Babel 7. Cool. So now hopefully in the background all that's done uh, and all we have to do now is a react-native run-android. This will spool up that Metro Bundler and begin building those projects. There's the Metro Bundler going right there. And this will take both this command prompt screen we have running here and this terminal running your code at the same time. You have to have both of them running their tasks in the background. All right. While that's going, hey, there we go. This will look very similar to the Expo main page here. All right, welcome to React Native. Let's go ahead and start changing our first native app, right? Let's go ahead and start building something. I'm gonna open up Visual Studio Code with a new window. I'm gonna open my app file here, which would be Covalence, my app. There we go. Oh, Covalence, open, open file, my bad. I'm going to open folder. There we go, my app, select. And here we go, this has quite a bit more generated now than our Expo CLI video from previously. We, you know, we have our tsconfig.json, our package, package lock. We can use jest to be testing here as well, and it's also type safe jest as well, once you figure out what unit testing is. The main requirement, I believe, um, is our index.js entry point must remain a .js file, otherwise this will break. And from here, you might want to, I'm gonna delete this app.js file. I'm gonna see if that breaks anything. Because <laughs> we have this app.tsx file, because again, we wanna say safely typed within this guy. And you'll notice it looks very very much the same as the starter page for the Expo CLI. And hopefully that didn't break anything. If I come back to my simulator for my hotkeys, I hit double tap R to watch my app clearly just break. So I think, let's see, if I do app.tsx, this should theoretically fix the problem. There we go. Uh, this is a recent GitHub issue saying that this template was breaking initially without having to specify, if you didn't specify the .tsx file down here. So let's go ahead and build something out real quick to show you guys what we can do. I mean, yeah, you know, we can just change this background color to pretty much anything else we want. I'll use the hex code 0091EA. And voila. We have a covalence blue background with some text. Um, like I had mentioned before, you can still do your API calls and a component did mount. You can still type your props and state for this component. Um, you know, and just you can build out whatever you want from there, kind of like you do when you're doing React. So I'll mess with your views and text a little bit. And maybe in the next video, I can do a short walkthrough on how to modify these guys before we move on to building an app with some navigation. So I'll see y'all in the next video where we discuss maybe doing a little bit of basic coding so we can get a lab going off of this video. See y'all soon.